All right, that's got to be enough silence. Enough silence. Shall we start? This? Yes, let's start. <laughs> All right, uh, hello and welcome to The Good Robot Andy, Season 3, Episode 4. My name's Andy Balaam and this is... I'm Andy Cockerill. And today we are going to be talking about a film called... Uh, Kubo and the Two Strings. Kubo and the Two Strings, which uh, has got to be <laughs> a Studio Ghibli film. Ooh, okay. Uh, about a boy called Kubo who meets a guitar <laughs> <laughs> with two strings which have their own personalities. Uh, okay. Is that right? Um, is that about it? It's not, but it is... <clears throat> it is an animation. Right, okay. So you are, I think, uh, closer than you have been for a while. And I note that you didn't go for a rollicking Disney adventure on that one. No, but it was, it was near the top of my mind. <laughs> <laughs> but my poor brain has only got one idea. Oh, that's that's okay. But it sounded, it sounded like... I didn't know where to go other than animation. It just sounded animation -y. It is, yeah. yeah. So it, it is a... Um, 3D stop motion animation. Oh wow! Um, oh wow! So it's from. Is it made up of a series of images? Because after all, that's what film is, isn't it? That's what I've heard we, from an expert. We can credit uh, Kermo de Mayo for that. Oh no, not Kermo de Mayo. Who was it that said that? It was what's his name, the grumpy Charlie Kaufman. Uh, yeah. After all, film is just a succession of still images to give the illusion of movement. Yeah. Really, Charlie? No, we didn't know that. Thank you very much. Yeah, that was an excruciating interview. <laughs> it was. <laughs> it, really is. it was a real pleasure. My, one of my favourites was when, when Simon Mayo, who's such a professional, try, you know, was trying to warm up the dead corpse that was the interview yeah. and just try and get them engaged and say, so, um, so why did you choose uh, these, you know, these people to be in your film? Because they're really good. And he just said... Well, I wanted to be to be in the film, and they said yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, he clearly didn't want to be interviewed. No. So, what was he doing there, being interviewed? Well, quite. They could have sent one of the stars of the film instead. I'm sure that David Thewlis would have been a much better interview subject than either of them. Anyway, anyway, so this film, yes, whose name I've already forgotten, Kubo and the Two Strings, is a series of still images. It is. Yes, it is that. It's exactly that. It's a series of still images uh, made to to to, to uh, give the illusion of movement. Right. Yeah. Um, and it's from like, like that bit in Terminator where um, Arnie takes his eye out. Oh yes, 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 yes. That that's some quite bad stop motion. That actually isn't it. Yes. Um, also, the end bit where you see the 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 T eight hundred. Skeleton, uh, that's quite bad stop motion too. Yes, doesn't hold up. But very with well a kind of days. no, but with a kind of B movie feel to it that yeah that adds to the charm. It does. It does add to the charm. Uh, yeah, it definitely adds to the charm. So, um, Kubo and the Two Strings is from Studio Leica, um, who have made uh, quite a few movies actually, uh, notably things like Coraline which is an adaptation of Neil Gaiman's book. Yeah. Uh, I don't think I've seen it, but I think I've, I've got an impression of it, maybe from a trailer. It's very, very good. Uh, also mm -hmm. a movie called Paranorman, which I haven't seen. Uh -huh. I have got on disc, actually. I just haven't watched it yet. Uh, and their most recent one before this one was a film called The Box Trolls. Ah, The Box Trolls. Yeah, which is a lot of fun. I saw a trailer for that. It looked all right. Yeah, it's it's a lot of fun. So this is their it latest. It didn't look. Pardon? It didn't look as exciting. It didn't. It it didn't look interesting to an adult. The box trolls. Was it more interesting than it looked? Uh no, not really. Okay. Uh, but cool. I think uh, my son enjoyed it a lot. Uh -huh. He's okay. probably the target audience. Okay. Uh, it's quite gross and silly. Right. Um, I think I lost interest about halfway through, but I, I was enjoying right. the visuals. The visuals are sumptuously beautiful shall we say right yeah oh, it looked good yeah. I didn't realise it looked that good uh, yeah, but, okay. but Kubo and the Two Strings is mm -hmm. um, is yeah, from that, yeah. is from Studio Leica 
It features the voices of Charlize Theron, uh, Art Parkinson, who's uh, who's new to me, um, Rafe Fiennes, uh, Rooney Mara, and George Takei from Star Trek. Uh-huh. Uh, Star Trek Wait, and he was, social media. Was he? He was um, yeah. uh, originally Sulu, Lieutenant Sulu, then Captain Sulu. But- Sulu. Mm-hmm. And uh, but now he's a star of Twitter. Now he's a star of Twitter and Facebook, yeah, and um, uh-huh. a, a sort of um, LGBT advocate and champion. A champion, yeah, very much a man you want on your side, not mm-hmm. not on your side, I think. <laughs> um, and also Matthew McConaughey is in Kubo and the Two Strings. Mm-hmm. And, and tell me where where I know Charlize Theron from. Charlize Theron. Um, Mm, where would you know her from? So she she's been in a lot of stuff actually. Shall I have a look at her filmography? Have a go and um, reel off some movies. So she has been in. Oh, hang on. You may know her from Children of the Corn Three: Colon Urban Harvest. <laughs> I haven't seen which that. which was her first actually, movie. <laughs> I don't think I've seen any of the Children. Have of you the not? Corn they're actually films. they're actually the first one is actually rather good. Yeah, definitely on my list. Yeah, it's good fun. Um, so she was in the Devil's Advocate uh, with um, Keanu. No, no, no. Keanu. Uh, she was it's all right. That yeah, I thought it was good fun. It, I, it, the, the thing with that movie is, you watch it once and you think, yeah, that was pretty good. You watch it again and you think, eh, it doesn't hold up quite yeah, as well as it did just, the first should time. Should have just watched it the one time. Yeah, probably. Yeah, <laughs> maybe it's not the kind of thing you should watch more than once. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else here. She was in Monster. Um, I know the name really clearly, but these things are not... Was Aeon Flux. Have you seen Aeon Flux? No, I don't think so. That's a, that's a good movie. Uh, Sleep... Uh, no, Battle in Seattle. Haven't seen that one. No. Uh, she was in The Road, which is one of my favourites. Ah, uh, yeah, The Road. She's the, she the mum? She's the mum, yeah. She doesn't, she's not mm-hmm. in it for very long. Spoiler. No, but she does kind of... She's pivotal. She is very much pivotal, yeah. Uh, Snow White and the Huntsman, in which she played Queen Ravenna. Mm. Uh, Prometheus, she was in. That was rubbish. Mm-hmm. Uh, she was in Mad Max Fury Road. Great, which I haven't great, seen. Great film, great film. Really want to see. Yes, fantastic. She was in The Huntsman Winter's War as Queen Ravenna, again. Mm-hmm. Uh, a movie called Brain on Fire, which I don't, I haven't seen that. That sounds good though. Yeah, it sounds alright. Um, Hancock, which I haven't seen. Yeah. Uh, in the Valley of Ilar, which I also haven't seen. In fact, I, I don't think I've seen that many films with with her in, but she's done a lot of stuff. I don't, I don't know why her name is so familiar to me when I haven't seen her films. Mm. Um, and Matthew McConaughey hasn't he been in loads of things we've talked about? <coughs> yes, he has. Yeah, he's always good, Matthew McConaughey. Uh, he's always in our podcast. I, yeah, I think... Um, I'm trying to think what he has been in that we have talked about, but we've definitely talked about the McConaissance. Yes. Uh, which uh, I think the the honeymoon period of that may be coming to an end. He was in... Oh, right. He was in the uh, the one about where he's accused of kidnapping... Uh, his wife, isn't he, or something? Uh, oh, or murdering his wife. Um, it was based on a book. What? Gone Girl. Yeah. No, that's Ben Affleck. Was he not? That's oh. Ben Affleck. Oh, was it? <laughs> oh, that's different. Do you want me to look up Matthew McConaughey as well? <laughs> no, no, this is too boring. Okay. Sorry, go on. Tell me about the film. Okay, so the film is. I apologise. <clears throat> it's set in um, sort of medieval Japan. Okay. In which there's a young man called young man, young boy, called Kubo. Mm-hmm. who lives with his mother next to the sea. And he goes into the village, their local village, to tell stories for money, you know, to sort of mm-hmm. to get money. And and this is this is a full-length feature film. Yes. It's entirely stop motion. It is entirely, it, it's entirely stop motion. I think it does have some CGI to augment mm-hmm. it because it's pretty mm-hmm. big in scope. Okay. So it has some big stuff going on. I don't think I've ever seen a stop motion plus CGI film. Yeah, it's pretty impressive. Mm. Pretty impressive. So he goes into the local village to tell stories to the local people and sort of mm-hmm. uh, get money. 
And he does this by... Um, uh, he can do magic. So okay. he has a magic uh, sword and... Mm-hmm. He invokes when he invokes this, he he can make origami happen all on its own out of pieces of paper, which it's slightly random, sli- but okay. slightly random, but you know it's Japanese, so it kind of works like that. Mm-hmm. And uh, if you can imagine that in stop motion, it's wow. it's very very effective. Yeah, it's really really beautiful. So he is, and whilst he's there, um, his mother who. Uh, is not in the best of health. Um, is attacked by uh, by things unknown. Oh, this is spoilery, by the way. I mean, people probably know by now that it's spoilery, but there might we might have a new listener. So hello, hello, hello. 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 Yes. Have you replaced the old one? Maybe we have, but I mean, we're about to spoil the film for you. So yeah, it's there's always spoilers if you don't like yeah. spoilers. So essentially, listen, you listen should to another podcast. go away, watch the film. Come back. Uh, oh, that's a more positive attitude. Yes. Yeah. Uh, oh, you're back. Okay, you're back. Right. So welcome back. Welcome. Back. <laughs> okay. So his mother is attacked by um, things unknown, and um, and dies. Oh. But she um, puts her consciousness because she's a, like a magician. Mm-hmm. Um, she puts her consciousness into a <clears throat> a stone monkey. Who becomes a real monkey? Okay. <clears throat> and um, but Kubo doesn't know that monkey is contains the consciousness of his mother. Okay. And she doesn't tell him that's who she okay. is. Um, and so they they head off together uh, to try and find a magic some magic armor, a magic helmet, and a magic sword, another magic sword in order to fight some forces of evil that are coming their way. And, the, mm-hmm. and these forces of evil are his mother's sisters, who are voiced by Rooney Mara, and ultimately his grandfather, played by Rafe Fiennes, who's mm. already stolen one of Kubo's eyes and wants the other one. Mm. Yes. So this is dark? It is dark. Yeah, it is dark. Um, so, um... Hmm. Uh, okay. Yeah. So, on, and on their on their travels, they meet uh, Matthew McConaughey's character, mm-hmm. who is a samurai, who has been transformed into a stag beetle. Okay. <coughs> <coughs> okay, I'm I'm suspending my disbelief. Okay. No, it's uh, it looks very cool. <laughs> um, and he's kind of in denial about the fact that he's a stag beetle. And it, he, he, he's, he's very much played for laughs, that character, um, okay. as you can probably imagine. Um, mm-hmm. So, and they go on a, they go on a hero quest. Mm-hmm. And I was struck as I was watching this and sort of afterwards talking about it. So I watched this with my wife and son. Um, about how much this reminded me of uh, another film that I've talked about on this podcast, um, which was Song of the Sea. Mm-hmm. Um, it's very reminiscent of that in that it's got a hero quest. It's stop motion animated. I know Song of the Sea was hand animated, but mm-hmm. they both have a, that kind of organic, magical feel to them that you just don't get with mm-hmm. with um, CGI animation. And you just know the level of attention and care that's gone into them. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it really is. Uh, so anyway, yes, Kubo, um, in order to find the sword, they have to attack uh, a giant skeleton guardian. Mm-hmm. And this skeleton is covered with uh, swords. It's got swords stuck in its head, and they have to find the right one. Um, mm-hmm. And this all looks very organic and sort of um, steampunky, I suppose, is mm-hmm. how I would describe mm-hmm. it. Um and then they find the breastplate, and then he has to do battle with Grandfather, who's played mm-hmm. by Rafe Fiennes. And along the way, uh, they they have a um, they sort of they witness a what's known as the Bon Festival, which is a little bit like the Day of the Dead in Mexico, right? Um, mm-hmm. And I suppose like 
maybe like uh, how Halloween used to be, where family mm -hmm. members communicate with deceased loved ones. Okay. And they light lanterns and put them down a river, and it's all really beautiful mm -hmm. and stunning looking and evocative. And, you know, it, it all looks like it hangs together and nothing ever looks out of place. I know that's a, kind of a, maybe a stupid thing to say, but sometimes in in you know sort of contemporary animation and stop motion and things of that kind of period stuff sometimes there are sort of nods and winks that let you know that this is a modern piece of work mm -hmm. but this all looks very credible and authentic mm -hmm. i suppose um and <clears throat> so kubo then uses the spirits of the dead to shield himself from grandfather's magic okay and defeats him uh, which is all rather good and he's then able to Kubo is then able to speak with his parents whose okay. spirits appear beside him um, okay and it's all rather wonderful and uh, I, as soon as I, I as soon as I watched this film you know straight afterwards I thought this is a good Robot Andy's movie. <laughs> you know, it's just, it's perfect to talk mm -hmm. about this film because it's the kind of thing that, you know, although I talked about this on, on the radio show, which we'll talk about later on, um, it is hard to talk about this film without spoiling it mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. there's a lot of plot and there's a lot of stuff that you can't really talk about. Right, yeah. Um, so I just ended up talking about the feel and the look and... The quality. Yeah, you can just kind of say, yeah. yeah, it's like a charming animation. Yeah. You should watch it. Yeah, you should absolutely watch this because I don't think that enough people saw it. Right. Um, for whatever reason. So is it based on a folk story or something? Like, it sounds quite specific. I'm just having a look. Uh, it doesn't... And the dark yeah, themes. It doesn't appear to be based on anything. No, it's um, oh. it's an original piece of work. I wonder whether it's based on uh, themes that are more common in Japanese folktales or something. You know, the the idea that some of your ancestors are out to get you mm. and, and some of them are there, are present with you, but on your side. Yeah. It sounds quite alien to Western culture. Yeah, definitely. You know, definitely in terms of um, his mother's spirit inhabiting a monkey is, mm -hmm. you know, is completely batty. In, in, in many ways but works perfectly and it's actually very poignant because um, the monkey tells uh, Matthew McConaughey's character uh, that uh, she is his mother she is Kubo's mother but she's not going to tell mm. him that she's his mother because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. it would be too traumatic for him <laughs> obviously Uh I'm just yeah, thinking talking about, monkey yeah. fine talking monkey mother <laughs> step too far yeah it's too it's just yeah it's too far <laughs> I was just thinking of another really great set piece where they go they um, have to take a boat on the sea and um, uh, to find one of the magical uh, items and um they encounter weird stuff in the water, giant eyeballs that are that are hypnotic. Nice. Yeah, it's some of it's really quite psychedelic and weird. Yeah. Um, and Beetle is Beetle at that point. I think he's just called Beetle actually. Um, yeah, Beetle is an amnesiac samurai who was cursed to take the form of a stag <laughs> beetle. <laughs> that kind of kind of reminds me of um... Monkey. What's the story? Oh. By the Russian, where he wakes up and he's transformed. Metamorphosis. Yes. Reminds me of that. Yeah, definitely. Um, so that's very strange and psychedelic and threatening. Mm. Uh, because they get, you know, they get ambushed under the water and over the water. His mother's sisters are also attacking them. So they're being attacked mm. on two fronts. Are they are they all alive, the, the bad guys, the, like the sisters and the uncle? The sisters, um, 
their mouths don't move, so they're just uh, they look like um, they're made of porcelain or something. Right. Really, so they're not real. They're, I mean, they're, well, they're real. They're but real. They're, not alive. they're spirits. Yeah. And his mm-hmm. also his grandfather mm-hmm. is a spirit as well. Right. Um, that's yeah. It it is. Um, it's one of those films uh, that has already, I think you know, jumped into my top 10 or top 20 of mm. whatever films I have in there. The, the, the list that changes from week to week. <laughs> um, but it's already in there. It's just so, so good. Mm. Yeah. And the, the, the darkness and the creepiness of it sounds really exciting and interesting. Yeah, it is. It is both of those things. And it's well paced. You never, it's never, it doesn't outstay its welcome. It's 102 minutes. It's, a, you know, an hour and 42 minutes long. Mm-hmm. Um, it is just beautifully made, and uh, you know mm. the the amount of love and um, uh, work that has gone into this is incredible. It really is incredible. So my son got a Minecraft stop motion animation set for his birthday and my other son liked it so much that he asked one for his birthday Mm -hmm. so now he's got one too so how does how does that work so they've both got stop motion minecraft identical stop motion minecraft animation sets but no no i know but how how does it um i know that i know how stop motion works but how do you make that work for minecraft (laughs) what what it is is it's a series of still images (laughs) i feel like we're caught in a time warp (laughs) Um, what what it is, all it is 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 not that much in the box. Mm-hmm. Basically, there's a frame that you balance your phone or tablet on. Ah, oh, I see. There's an app that you install on your phone or tablet. Yes. And there are s- some uh, backgrounds and Minecraft bits and bobs and little characters. And then you just move them a bit and press the button on the app, and it and it. What's nice about it is it, it the app's really nicely designed and just is really simple and works. Yeah. The backgrounds are the right size and you know they work and the the props are simple enough. It 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 basically is pretty easy to make a little story. That sounds really cool. So what my reason I bring this up? Yes. Yeah, it is cool. It is cool. Like almost all of the Minecraft merchandise, mm. even after Microsoft bought them, it's top quality mm. so the books the minecraft books are like little works of art they're like little things you want to keep yeah you know they're not like a read and throw away thing or some rubbish that you con the kids into buying mm. they're they're really excellent high quality goods um anyway yeah so include and that includes this um it's made by mattel anyway my point is <laughs> my point is um, we endorse Mattel by the way we have nothing against Mattel oh really is that right we quite we know. quite like Mattel to make uh, good robot Andy's um, plush toys yeah or um, rigid toys <laughs> <laughs> so my question is <laughs> sorry you nearly lost me then my my question is: Can can I show this film to them to inspire them to make stop motion? Oh films? yes. Or is it too scary? No. Well, okay. So, um, how old is how old is? Um. Eight. Uh, let me check the um. Let me check the BBFC on this one. It's PG. Yeah, I think that'll be all right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. All right, yeah. so it's a bit. It's a bit. There's threat, but there is threat. In fact, shall I check the actual doodah? Might be of interest to people with parents. Yeah. Okay. So like me, it's say not people with parents. People who are parents. It might be of interest to people with parents, or it might not depend. So the insight. We don't care about spoilers because we've already spoiled the film. Yeah, we've done it. We've um. Done it. So violence. Uh, characters fight against fantastical creatures with swords and other weapons. And one character right. is injured during Seems combat, Star Wars. and a wound is briefly seen. Mm-hmm. Uh, threat: There are some scary scenes set in spooky locations featuring witches, a giant skeleton, and various other monsters. 
The main character is a young boy who has lost an eye at the hands of his monstrous grandfather. You don't see that happen, by the way. Mm -hmm. uh, who is intent on taking the other. There is therefore a sense of mild threat throughout. Mm -hmm. and, a, and the theme of grieving and loss features heavily throughout. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a good point, actually. Mm -hmm. um, I find myself being very moved by this film mm -hmm. in many different ways. Um, yeah, but I tear up at anything. I tear up at adverts where they say that the personal gets your whites whiter than white. <laughs> so I'm not really a good barometer of people tearing up in films. But we've already mentioned The Road, and, I, I, and The Road has this uh, absent mother. Is, yes. Is, is such an important part. Um, yeah, The Road... But in a way, this is like a present mother. Uh, very much so, although he doesn't know it's a present mother. Right, so he's still grieving. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah, it's, it is very interesting. And yes, so, so to answer your original question, can you show it to your, to your sons to inspire them? Yes, you absolutely should. Yeah. Cool. And then we maybe we could make some stop motion. Yeah. Because it the the level of artistry in in Kubo is off the scale. Yeah. What what are the two strings? Ah, now yes, of course. That's a major plot thing. Yeah, I completely <laughs> I completely neglected to talk about that. So to make sure that we spoil every aspect. Yes, of this in film. fact, I I misled our listener and you uh -huh. at the beginning of the of talking about this film. When I said that, I am our listener. When, when I said he goes into town, and he uses his sword, he doesn't use a sword. He doesn't have a sword at the beginning of the film. Okay. What he does have is um, uh, an ancient stringed instrument. Uh -huh. That's rather like a lute or a guitar. It's a bit like that, mm -hmm. but it's only got. I think he starts off with three or four strings, mm -hmm. and when he hits them, in a particular way, it creates magic. And, right. and that mm -hmm. that's what makes the magic and, and that comes mm -hmm. back repeatedly during the film mm -hmm. and the, the thing about the two strings this is a massive mm -hmm. spoiler mm -hmm. the thing about the two strings is at the end of the film when he's facing his grandfather and assorted nasties that his grandfather has conjured up his strings get broken mm -hmm. and he has to improvise he has to put together a, a couple of strings so he can't do magic. Mm. Yeah, yeah, that's right. He has to he improvise right. and um, you sort of make a couple of strings out of stuff that he finds on the ground mm -hmm. and uh, make the magic chords. And that is uh, an incredible moment. Mm. Yeah. yeah, And you kind of see and feel the magic as it's happening. It's um, mm. So yes, those are the two strings. Thank you for reminding me about that. Otherwise, people that's would have right. gone in thinking, where's the magic sword? Yeah, yeah. where is it? Where is it? Yeah, where is it? Where is it? <laughs> yeah. Uh, when I listen back to these podcasts and I hear myself trying to do the Arnie impression, <laughs> it's really awful. There's a um, in this month's. Should just um, let you do it. No, don't let me do it. I'm terrible at it. <laughs> um, in this month's uh, Empire magazine, there's an interview with Arnie <laughs> about various things that he's been involved in, and it is impossible not to read it. <laughs> In an Arnie accent, you just have to. <laughs> he's got, he's got loads of inspiring quotes about bodybuilding and stuff. Yeah, bodybuilding like, and life, and I mean, yeah, um, it's all, like this is the other side to him, other than the kind of yeah ridiculous hero that he is. He is a he us. is a hugely inspirational guy, and and he talks about. Um, I know we're digressing a little bit here, but it, it is it is very, very interesting read. He talks about being on the set of his first movie, which was, I think, a movie called Stay Hungry, which is about bodybuilders. Oh, it wasn't Conan the Barbarian? No, it wasn't, no. Um, okay. In which the director of photography said to him, Arnold, the, the camera loves you. You've got to do this. You've got to do this for a living, man. And... You know, if you look at something like Conan, where he has very few lines and his acting is not the best, but it doesn't matter because the camera loves him. Yeah. You know, he just looks incredible on camera. And we all love him. Yeah. Uh, and he also talked about, you know, using his accent as a tool for humour, uh, mm -hmm. particularly in Kindergarten Cop. Yeah. When he's talking about some of those lines he has to say, you know, he's talking in the interview saying... 
I'll try and do it in an Aussie accent. Those those <laughs> lines would not have been funny if it if a guy a normal guy had said them, but because <laughs> because I said them and I said it's not a tumor. It's like these kids think I'm funny. <laughs> That's a terrible terrible Aussie accent. Yeah, it's uh it's a terrible movie. It it is a terrible movie. Yeah, yeah, but it's very quotable. It's not forgivable in any way, you know. It's not like Johnny Mnemonic, which is a terrible movie that I love. Well, you love you know, it. Kindergarten yeah. Cop. It's just a terrible film. Incidentally, I picked out uh, in in uh, whether it's I think it's this week's uh, movies of the week. Uh, mm-hmm. It's a very quiet week on TV this week, so I, mm-hmm. I felt forced to pick out Requiem for a Dream just to no, really? really bum everybody out this weekend. <laughs> It's just to hurt me. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> normally, I wouldn't. Oh, wow. I, normally, I wouldn't do that because the, there's just so little on that it's like, well, okay. Right. <sighs> yeah. Um, okay. So, what is the point of ku? What is it? K- Kubo and the two strings. Kubo and the two strings. What is the point? Why of is it? it? Why is the world better for it? Why, what do we learn from it? Okay. Things like that. Why is the world better for it? Okay. So the world is better for it because. Um, it's a really great quality, good quality, well, it's an outstanding quality, bigly quality. It's the best quality yes. um, 3D animated movie, uh, stop motion. And there's very few of those in existence these days. It's, you know, um, stop motion is, if you think about how long it's been around for, it's been around for as long as film itself has existed. Mm-hmm. Um and it still persists as an art form because mm. there's something very tactile about it. You can almost reach out and touch the stuff that's happening on the screen. Um, that's great. I remember being so blown away by Wallace and Gromit. Wallace and Gromit. Yeah. And before that, um, watching Jason and the Argonauts yeah. uh, and the fighting skeletons and just that, all of that stuff uh, is just it's phenomenal. It really is. It's like mm. magic, isn't it? Mm. Um so the world is a better place for that mm-hmm. um it needs to, it, it's good that it exists because it shows us a story from another culture that seems very credible and genuine mm-hmm. and it is in the same way that i'm referring to other films that we've talked about on this podcast mm-hmm. things like me and earl and the dying girl it mm-hmm. deals with the subjects of grief and loss and emotional trauma in a really mature, I don't want to use the word mature in a sort of derogatory way, but in a really mature and sort of um, sensitive way, mm. whilst also yeah. being a really great adventure and uh, a good, you know, a cracking movie. Mm. Yeah. Cool. It's interesting that quite often grief is dealt with through the eyes of children mm. possibly because when we're grieving we feel like a child or you know or it helps it helps to identify with someone i think so i think also that i think that children grieve in a different way than adults do and uh, mm. children are far more resilient to uh, to things like uh, you know grandparents dying and you know hopefully not things like parents dying but I think that kids are a lot more resilient than adults are because they're not encumbered with all of the stuff that that adults are encumbered with and you know yeah. Kubo managed to accept reality yeah because yeah it's just yeah yeah so it, it is certainly interesting in that respect but it is also, as you would say, a rollicking adventure, <laughs> is it? featuring some, jaw- I mean, literally, jaw-droppingly beautiful set pieces. Yeah, sounds good. Yeah, it really is good, listener, and uh, you should definitely show it to your children to inspire them. Show it, yeah. show it to the whole family; they'll love it. Absolutely. Yeah, love it's it. pretty difficult to get the wife to watch um, children's films. The wife. Yeah. Hey up. She liked the Lego movie. Okay. She pretty much hates children's films. Right, okay. Hmm. But she's forced to watch them. Yeah, okay. 
So so she has a grump. <laughs> she would never do that. <laughs> never knowingly grumpy. <laughs> All right, well, I think we we're, we're done. Let's do some plugging. Okay, well, shall I plug first? Go for it. Okay, so I present a movies and music, uh, movie reviews and music, or oh, movie music actually, show on Glastonbury FM 107.1, also available online, listener. Uh, that's in the Glastonbury Street and Wells area of uh, Somerset. Um... That's on Thursdays between 6 and 7 p.m. <laughs> repeated on Fridays between 2 and 3 p.m. Also, there are podcast highlights. If you look up a movie mashup, I haven't done them this week, I'm afraid. I've been busy with other things, but I'm going to get get on that as soon as I can. It's also, it's also, you can also listen live on the internet. Yes, you can listen live on the internet. It's streamed live. Um, there's a lot of very other very good shows on there as well. So, uh, if you don't live yeah. on Glastonbury Street uh, and in the wells, or in a well with the woman from um, the ring, with the woman from the ring, yeah, <laughs> in the well, that would be uh, that would be bad. I, you know, I'm not sure. Yeah, I think, I mean, does she eat you or something? Or? Uh, no, you die when she sees you, you just die, yeah. So, you wouldn't live with her in a well for very long, no. You, you definitely wouldn't. Okay. No, it would not be good. Plug. Plug away. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, I, there's, there's a YouTube channel of, of me uh, talking about programming. Uh, some stuff about big, like learning how to program from scratch and some stuff about more advanced topics. Um, if you come to the ACCU conference next month, you will be able to see me live talking about programming. Wow! Talking about talking about how to write a programming language. That's amazing. Which is very exciting and terrifying. And is that in Bristol? It is in Bristol. Excellent. It's an excellent conference for uh, programmers. Mm. Lots of very advanced programming topics there, which is why I'm terrified to be speaking there, because mm. they're very, very, very clever people. Uh, I'm writing a programming language called Pepper. It's going to be great just as soon as I finish writing it. Pepper Pig. Uh, uh, not Pepper Pig, just Pepper. And uh, uh, I made a game called Rabbit Escape and it's available for free on Android. Hooray. Although I'd highly recommend you pay, you buy the 60p version of it, which is identical. <laughs> it's also on the Amazon store and the f Drive open source store. You can find... The Good Robot Andy's on Twitter, on YouTube. You can find links if you Google for or some other search engine like DuckDuckGo for the Good Robot Andy's. DuckDuckGo. DuckDuckGo. You can find uh, if you click on the about page in the top right hand corner, you can find links to Twitter. You can find me on Mastodon.social, which is the new social network for people who don't like social networks controlled by corporate selfish entities. What would they uh, be then? <laughs> um, I wouldn't know. I've disavowed myself. Okay, all right, all right. I do. I do have a Twitter account. Yeah. Um, but now that Donald Trump's on there, it's unfashionable. So oh, he's been on there for ages. He's bigly. Yeah. He's the. He's he's got the best Twitter. He he is very very good at Twitter. He is, isn't he? He's he's just it doesn't a, qualify you to be a president. No, it doesn't. But he is very good at just trolling the hell out of everybody. He is he is the master of um, lobbing a good aid into a room and then running away. Yeah, so good. At him. Mm. Yep, and he's the president. Man's a genius. No, he's not. No, oh. not a genius. Psychopath. Yeah, so man's a psychopath. He's definitely a psychopath. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So uh, yeah, it's all just programming for me, really, apart from this podcast. Yeah. Okay. Oh, and I did the thing. Did I tell you I was? Yeah. I mentioned this podcast um, about God and whether God exists yes. and whether hell exists and things like that. So I did that. I made it and I put it up. And you? And there's a link did, you to ha it did, did you say you had some feedback from that? Yeah, someone wrote a comment on it saying they liked it. Blimey, that's more than we get. I was like, whoa. <laughs> 
Thanks. I wasn't expecting anyone to listen to it, let alone like you it. You should get this person to listen to us as well. <laughs> to, to the us's. Yeah. yeah. I didn't do the plugging part at the end of each episode. It's rather a more serious podcast. Oh, really? Yeah. I'm disappointed. I thought this podcast was very serious. The thing about this podcast is that uh, our listeners are so vacuous <laughs> that they're probably not interested in the other one. <laughs> oh, dear. I think we've just alienated our final listener by calling them vacuous. <laughs> well, we've got a new one, according to you. So well, yeah, maybe. A new one who doesn't like spoilers, so they've done the rewinding thing. Yeah. Yes. Well yes. done. Well done. Well done. Um, so, uh, for this for this week's podcast, uh, I'm trying to think. Nobody died, so I don't have to talk about some famous right. iconic actor who's died. Maybe, right. maybe, Maybe not next time. Yeah, let's hope not. Yeah, definitely. Um, but listener, if uh, if you have films you'd like us to talk about, yes. and especially if you have uh, technical topics you'd like us to talk about, or you'd like us never to talk about a technical topic again, mm. let us know. Um, we we're not sure what technical topics, uh, if any, will be interesting, and if we don't think of any, we'll carry on doing films. But if people are interested in, um. Uh, something that it's possible it's something that we might know about so we can talk about it yeah let us know yeah definitely because you know we we like to mix it up and let us know what you think about Arnold Schwarzenegger yeah Arnold this is or, I cannot use this tiny weapon <laughs> it's not a tumor it's not a tumor at all and if you would like um, soft, plush versions of us, or indeed rigid versions, as Andy suggested, yeah. uh, please don't let us know. Well, if you could contact Mattel directly. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Uh, we, we'd like them to look like uh, the likenesses of ourselves that are on the blog. Yeah, which you, if you're watching this on YouTube, you can see, you can see Andy, actually, but not me, because <laughs> I am obscured behind the actual... <laughs> okay. So we look a bit like Terence and Philip. From South Park. Yeah. Yeah. I would really like rigid toys based on those likenesses. I think that would be cool. On Possibly on sticks. Like just the heads on sticks. Oh. Well. So if someone okay. could make those using a 3D printer, say. Or a mug. And send them in. A good Robert Andy's mug. Or a t-shirt. Oh, yeah. We could, we could do mugs. Merchandising. Let's do some mugs. That would be fun. And t-shirts. Also, the other thing, uh, my son, and well, actually, especially the older one, is learning, is uh, he's learning about Blender, the 3D modelling program. Oh, nice. So he should design them in Blender. Yep. And then we can send send it off to a 3D printing company, and they'll 3D print it for that's us. That's it. That's what we need to do. Okay. But I, so just send in your donations now if you think that's a worthwhile. I definitely like uh, the idea of mugs. We can have... Our likenesses on one side, and on the back it would say spoilers. Something that would be cool. Something like that. Spoilers ahead. All right. I so I'm, I so want to do that. As soon as I get a second, I'm doing it. All right. It. I already have a page on Spreadshirt with lots of rabbit escape stuff on, <laughs> and a couple of other very geeky jokes. Excellent. So. I think that's it. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. I really. I don't know how. I, I've got such a long to-do list of films to watch from this podcast and from other mm. things. I need to organise that into a list and then work through it. But first you need to watch Point Blank. Yeah, which I have found. I know. The last podcast. The, oh, the last one or the one before that watched. you said you found it. <laughs> yeah. Come on. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I know, I'm sorry, but I will soon. Okay. I'm very excited about it. All right, excellent. And no, okay, the cool. next time we do this... Which might be in two weeks' time. I want you to have watched Point Blank. Yeah, that's what you said last time. Yeah, but I'm I'm serious this time. <laughs> Next time it's going to be. I'm like a British policeman. Stop, or I say stop again. Okay. Yeah. That's it. That's it. See you next Thank time. Thank you. Bye. <laughs>